Dick Clark and the cast of Thousand. See? See, Dick Clark, how easy it is to do a variety show? You go to your little corner, that's all. You know, it really is dangerous to do a variety show. That's what I'm trying to convince Dick Clark, because if you're a comedian, you can handle it. Well, this lets Dick out, but he has other things. He has charm. And is he handsome? You'll believe him with that shan on our hairdo. Is that good? <laughs> is he beautiful? He is so handsome. You know, you know when he was in high school, he is so gorgeous, you know? He got himself pregnant. Do you know that? <laughs> Man is beautiful. He's got personality. He's got charm. He he lights up a studio just by leaving it. <laughs> you don't really know him. Boring human being. This is a dull man. One night a peeping Tom was looking in his bedroom window and fell asleep. <laughs> Wants to host a show, a variety show. This is dangerous business. Facing an audience every night. And nightclubs, you can have a ball. They're drunk. Who cares? But here, these are dangerous people out there. Because they got in free. That's the trouble. <laughs> Well, and not you. This is a great crowd. Young, beautiful, attractive people. You ought to see what we get here usually. The average age in this studio is deceased. <laughs> they bring in victims by bus to Burbank. They schlep them here from Alameda, from Dakota. They bring ancient people. Come on, mother. We're going to see Ed McMahon drunk. Uh... <laughs> a little convention. The NBC crowd here. They never watch the show. They're always looking. Oh, there's a light. There's a monitor. Oh, there's an electrician. Look at the cable. Only way to tell you we're getting laughs if the Adam's apple goes up and down. <laughs> Weird. And the groups we get here. Nobody understands English. You're Americans, thank goodness. But usually they bring in from Germany groups. We want to see Engelbert Humperdinck. <laughs> or they come from Finland. <laughs> and we get a lot of Japanese here. They're so thrilled to just to, to see an American camera. <laughs> Uh, it's only a joke. I, uh... Oh, they are, but Japanese are nice. But you can't tell them jokes because they bow all the time. You say, good evening. A funny thing happened. After a while, you don't know which end you're working to, you know? When you're doing a variety show, you've got to be so careful to never follow a, a dedication to someone who's gone on to the great beyond. Especially if Georgie Jessel's doing it. And now, a dedication of songs by the great and the late Oscar Hammerstein, who has gone to the great Tin Pan Alley in the sky. <laughs> and I must get back to Mount Sinai Hospital myself, where I'm waiting the birth of my new bride. <laughs> <laughs> One thing, Dick, I gotta tell you, I know you're associated with rock and roll, but the worst thing is to follow a rock and roll act. First of all, the audience can't hear. They're in shock. 4,000 speakers blaring at 8 million decibels. Laser beams are flying. Noise in their, their ears, their faces are flattened out. And those rock acts never change. They always look alike. They always got that big head of hair and them tight pants, and they try to wear them out on the inside. those groups? My goodness, they got to use Novocaine to get their jockey shorts off. <laughs> and you never understand what they're singing. Without the word baby, 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 they'd have no songs. And they never finish a darn song. Never, never finish one. Blue Moon, I saw you standing a I got you under my ramadan. Tangerine, you're my ding dong dong ding dong 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 ding dong 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 dong. Hey, disco baby, I want my blue suede shoes. 